Good morning. This is video 8.1, A Trip Through Geologic Time. And we have kind of seen an overview of different types of fossils. We've explored how geologic time is organized from the oldest to the youngest. We've looked at how fossils get buried, and if they have a rapid burial, they have a greater chance of actually forming. And that the fossil record can tell us how life has changed over time as well as where it's found can give us evidence about how the earth has changed as well. So today we're going to start our notes. We're going to do section 8.1. And the first is just the definition of a fossil, and we've talked a little bit about this, but they're the preserved remains or traces of prehistoric life, and prehistoric is before man, and they show evidence of how, when, and where the organism lived, and approximately 10,000 years is the minimum age to be classified as a fossil. In our research we did last week, we looked at some of the ways that fossils can form. We know that they usually have to be buried under a very soft sediment, which eventually hardens. We know that the hard body parts are what tend to become fossilized, the bone, the shell, the beak, the tooth, the wing. Um, if there is only an empty cavity or outline, we call that a mold. And I've got a mold here for you to see. If the mold gets completely filled in with minerals over time and then hardens, and you can find a whole intact three-dimensional bone, shell, beak, tooth, that solid copy is called a cast, and this well vertebrae that has been filled in with rock is a cast fossil. A petrified fossil occurs as minerals replace all of the living parts, and we talked a little bit last week about the petrified forest in Arizona. And here is an image of some of the tree trunks that are petrified in Arizona. In very swampy, those giant tropical forests that existed many, many, many years ago, it, they were prolific, huge items of plant matter. And that plant matter, as everything dies and it accumulates and it piles up, and it gets buried as the earth changed through the process of erosion and deposition. And over millions of years, it carbonized which because all life is a carbon-based life form, there's a lot of carbon left in there. And then when it carbonized, it formed coal. And it also, other decaying life formed our oil reserves as well. And so all of our fossil fuels that we use to power our homes and our cars and our businesses and our lives, can't, if it's powered by fossil fuels, then it came from this time period, the, these fossils that have remained and what is left over, and what is left over is a great source of energy. Sometimes our um, fossils were preserved totally intact, and they were either frozen in ice or amber, and I have an amber fossil, I don't have an ice fossil, and so you've got here, we've got the intact cricket exoskeleton, um, We've got woolly mammoths that have been frozen, saber-toothed tigers that were. And we also have some fossilized tigers that were fossilized in tar in the La Brea tar pits. And you can even have um, their saber teeth and their fur remains. So those are called preserved remains where it hasn't all been replaced by minerals, but it's actually some of the living matter that's been preserved. Trace fossils would include animal tracks, footprints, burrows, um, trails, anything that is evidence that a living thing moved through that area, but it's not actually a body part. And then we have carbon films and carbon impressions where just the outline from the carbon and usually plant matter seeps through and we talked about last week that would be like those brown outlines of leaves you find on the driveway or the deck in the fall um, if 10,000 years passes and those outlines are still there that would be a carbon film or carbon impression 
What does the fossil record tell us about Earth history? It tells us that life has changed, that life has become more complex. We can get evidence like we looked at the ice cores at the beginning of class, how um, now that's more recent evidence, but it can tell us about the atmosphere, the climate, um, where there are volcanic eruptions, what's in the dust. It can tell us if where that fossil was found was once a land area or once a desert or a wet area, you know, what was going on, what does the evidence indicate. And um, it can also tell us that the, you know, the landform has changed. Um, you know, if, it, if you find um, the remains of shelled organisms there and now it's in the middle of um, eastern North Carolina, you know that that landform was once underwater, so it can tell you about change. Um, fossils give us a picture of the past, it gives us a picture of the living past. And sometimes we have to piece together the evidence that's missing because the fossil record is not complete. There's not a fossil from every thing that's ever lived on the earth. Um, evolution is the current theory to explain Earth's history, and evolution just means the gradual change in living things over long periods of time. There's two major ideas in when you from fossils that life has changed over time, and if an organism does not adapt and change as their environment changes, they will become extinct. Now last week when we were doing our little fossil research about types of fossils, you got this diagram on that as fossils assignment, which is in your notebook on page 163. And when an organism dies, we know three things can happen. They can either get covered or buried, they can be exposed and decomposed, um, or they can be destroyed. Um, the ones that get buried, again, that burial over time can be destroyed or they become fossilized. And then once they become fossilized, again, they can be destroyed, they can stay buried and never be discovered, or finally they can be discovered and then tell us something about the organism that lit that it was.